Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool things that I have found for this episode. Uh, we've got a couple of Apple stories. The first one over at cnetsnews.com. Uh, Tim Cook advises climate change deniers to get out of Apple stock. This is uh, one of those interesting uh, interesting articles where uh, during a shareholder meeting, um, there were a couple of suggestions that Apple, you know, not quite do the environmentally friendly things that, that they've uh, been kind of doing as of late. And uh, Tim Cook essentially shot it down and... In, in, in as many words, uh, said that uh, for those of you who think that um, that uh, Apple should not be doing anything environmental, uh, they should get out of Apple stock. So uh, kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> curious to see what kind of reaction that's going to uh, bring, but still nonetheless pretty cool. Uh, from, uh, the second Apple store that we have is from, uh, pfhub.com. Uh, an Apple promotion is fueling rumors that a new Apple TV release is imminent. This is, I believe is a good thing. Um, Apple, it, the article points out here that Apple is notoriously stingy when it comes to discounts and promotions, uh, preferring to keep its products at full price year round. However, today's announcement that a $25 iTunes gift card is being offered with any Apple TV purchase through March 5th, 2014, has stirred up rumors uh, that the latest iteration of the entertainment device is about to a yeah the latest iteration of the entertainment device is about to be released. This is simply because promotions are so rare that it's usually used as an indicator as to uh, what's actually going to be offered uh, as, a, as a future release. Because Apple typically does not comment on um, when they're going to release new anything, or even if if there's something new in the works. Uh, they typically just, you know, th there's either a special event that happens, or they just simply update their website and the new one is available. However, with that being said, uh, past history has shown that when they're trying to clear inventory out of the older devices, they'll occasionally offer up uh, promotions and that sort of thing. So pretty interesting. Uh, should be, I'm looking forward to it. I've been uh, kind of looking at uh, getting uh, an Apple uh, TV and it'll be nice. The, the latest one is somewhat compelling, but it'll be nice to, uh, if there's one imminent, to, to get the new one. You know, I don't want to buy something at the tail end of uh, the development cycle. I'd rather buy it at the beginning of the development cycle. From uh, Guardian LV, which is uh, the LibertyVoice.com uh, website, Google announces Project Era development plans. This is uh, pretty awesome. Um, Google has announced its intention to move forward with the development of Project Era. It's a $50 customizable module smartphone with interchangeable component blocks. The concept is designed to give users unlimited ability to upgrade the device by swapping components. Decide its small staff size, the company's advanced technology and projects group is expected to have a working prototype within the next few weeks and will prepare a version for the consumer market for early 2015. So pretty awesome. I'm uh, looking forward to it. I, I hope they uh, do this. Obviously, they'll be running Android. <laughs> um, you know, I, I wouldn't expect them to put anything else on there, but it'd be pretty cool to be able to actually... Uh, actually have a smartphone that you can modify or you know modularize you know configure it the way you want it to be as opposed to you know you're just stuck with whatever is you know shipped or whatever happens to be available so pretty interesting i'm, I'm interested to see uh you know what 
they actually are planning to to do with that, how successful it is, you know, that sort of thing. From the sunsentinel.com website, AT&T is planning a national tech trial. AT&T has proposed a region of Palm Beach County for a years-long trial that would switch customers to new internet-based technologies for services ranging from phone service to broadband and television. The goal is to transition customers to new networks that support the delivery of voice, text, video, and other forms of communication. Customers would switch from network infrastructure put in place decades ago before the use of internet and smart devices. So kind of interesting. Um, I'm curious to see, you know, what their longer term plans are. It should be pretty interesting uh, to say nonetheless. From uh, the BBC.com, this is pretty cool. I had to share this. Northern Lights Illuminate the UK. Uh, they've got some uh, pretty awesome photos. Here's one of them here. Look at that. That is beautiful. Let me get this where the light's not actually reflecting off the screen. There we go. Look at that. Gorgeous. Uh, the display, which is caused by electrically, electrically charged particles from the sun entering the Earth's atmosphere, led to scenes such as this one at the Stonehaven War Memorial. Uh, there's a, another one here. Really neat. Look at that. Is that neat or what? Just look at that. That's beautiful. Um, <laughs> this is just gorgeous. Here's another photo. Look at that beautiful photo. That is amazing. This is Northern Lights. You know, this is this is the Aurora Borealis. You know, I mean, you typically you don't see this in the UK. You know, here they've got another one. Quite nice. Um, you have to go check this out on the website. It's really quite phenomenal. They're, they've got a whole collection of photos here. I'm not going to show them all to you, but uh, pretty amazing. Well, maybe I'll do one more because this one I thought was pretty awesome. Check that out. That is awesome. I mean, come on. How can, how can that? That's just cool. So anyway, uh, yeah, check it out. It's on the BBC's uh, website. It's, it, you know, stuff like this I geek out over. You know, it's pretty cool. Uh, also, space-related or science-related, if you want. Um, there's uh, another article here on the Liberty Voice. NASA discovers 715 new planets. Um, pretty neat. The Kepler mission was launched in 2009 with the sole intention of finding new planets. Scientists have analyzed two of the three and a half years of data collected and their discoveries have almost doubled the previous 1,000 confirmed planets into what is now a total of almost 1,700 planets. The Kepler mission was expected to last four years, but due to budget constraints, it lasted three and a half years, having a total cost of $600 million. That's a lot of planets. You know, I mean, this is one of those things where it's, that's just a lot of planets. And it's pretty cool that they're finding planets. Not all of them are you know, suitable for life as we know it here on planet Earth. You know, a fair number of them have, you know, totally inhospitable uh, to, to life as we know it here on planet Earth, but still, nonetheless, pretty cool. From cbsnews.com, Japan launches a net into space to help with orbital debris. Apparently, orbital debris is such a huge problem in outer space that they're trying to net some of it up. Uh... Nearly, the article starts off here, nearly 60 years after the USSR launched the Sputnik 1 and more than 4,900 space launches later, a number of objects now circle the Earth. Scientists track nearly 20,000 pieces of space debris that are said to be larger than a softball, but it is estimated that close to 500,000 pieces of untrackable debris, perhaps millions of the smallest size, exist in orbit as well. If a single marble-sized piece of orbital debris were to hit a functional orbiting spacecraft, as seen in the movie Gravity, which I actually haven't seen, uh, the results would be catastrophic. So anyway, apparently uh, Japan is, uh, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, along with the uh, some researchers at the Kanagawa University, have created a 1,000-foot tether made up of ultra-thin wires of stainless steel and aluminum, it's not the first time a space agency has tried to clean up space junk. 
NASA explored this possibility by creating a so-called laser broom that would sweep the debris out of Earth's orbit. So anyway, long story short, uh, you know, they're trying to clean it up. So it should be pretty interesting to see what happens. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.